Welcome to Vetterview. In this video, I'm going to talk about the important points that you have to remember in avian digestive system. So first, let us start with the various structures of the avian digestive system. So first, we have oropharynx. In case of birds, mouth and pharynx is a combined cavity because of absence of soft palate. So the point you have to remember is it is oropharynx. The soft palate in case of birds is absent. Teeth are also absent. Beak is present. And the tongue is triangular in shape. So they have a very triangular shaped tongue which has mechanical papillae and salivary glands are well developed. Then we have the esophagus. So esophagus is the food pipe. It has two parts, cervical and thoracic part. And in the middle of these two parts, we have the dilatation of esophagus or an enlargement of esophagus called crop. Crop is also very much important. In case of fowl, mucus glands and start digesting bacteria are present. And in case of ducks, crop is absent. Okay, so what is the function of crop? The function of crop is the storage of food before it reaches the stomach. Okay, so in case of fowl, because they have a very uh, grain and starch heavy diet, starch digesting bacteria are present in the crop. But in case of ducks, the crop is absent. So the retention of food in the digestive tract of duck is very less. Then the stomach has two parts, proventriculus and ventriculus. Ventriculus is also called as the gizzard. And it is the muscular stomach. Proventriculus is the glandular stomach or true stomach, and it has gastric glands which secrete hydrochloric acid and pepsin. The gizzard has a mucosa lined with a structure uh, or chemical called coilin. Coilin consists of an amorphous matrix which has coilin rod like hard crystals. And in the presence of HCL from the proventriculus, this whole coilin structure will hard and it will form a protective lining on the mucosa of the gizzard. And it helps in grinding. So the main function of coilin and the main function of gizzard is to help in grinding of the food. Sometimes grit is also present for the grinding of food. So grit basically means very small uh, particles. Uh, they may be coilin, they may be of rocks, even they may be some feed additives like oyster shell grit. And the function of the grit is to grind the food. Then we have the digestive glands, pancreas and liver. So pancreas is present between the ascending and descending parts of the duodenum and it has three lobes. The main point that you have to remember in pancreas is that it has ascending and descending. Uh, it is present between the ascending and descending duodenum and in liver it has two lobes. Only the right lobe is connected to the gallbladder. Okay. One important point that is often asked in the exam is chemodeoxycholic acid is the main bile salt. So the main point that you have to remember in pancreas and liver is this. Chemodeoxycholic acid is the main bile salt. Then we have the small intestine and large intestine. Small intestine has three parts just like mammals, duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Duodenum has two parts, ascending duodenum and descending duodenum. Then between the jejunum and ileum, there's a structure called Meckel's diverticulum. So birds have yolk sac and as the bird will uh, or the chick will grow, the yolk cell will regress and there's a remnant of yolk sac left in the adult bird called Meckel's diverticulum. It is often asked in the exam, what is Meckel's diverticulum? It is the remnant of yolk sac and it is present at the junction of jejunum and ileum. So you can differentiate jejunum from the ileum or you can distinguish the junction between jejunum and ileum by looking at the Meckel's diverticulum. Then in case of birds, a proper division between the cica, uh, colon and rectum is not present. So cica are individual structures, but colon and rectum is a combined structure okay so there are two cica present cica plural cecum singular it has cellulitic bacteria in case of fowl and it has role in absorption of glucose volatile fatty acid amino acid and water in case of uh, the birds of prey like owls eagles and kites the cecum is absent okay then one important thing at the end of the digestive system is cloaca so it is a common structure or structure common to digestive excretory and reproductive systems. It has three parts, coprodium, urodium, and proctodium. And the external opening of the cloaca is called vent. So don't get confused between vent and cloaca. Cloaca is the tube-like structure, while vent is the external opening. So suppose this is the structure of cloaca. There are two sphincters like this, okay? They are not uh, real muscular structures, but just folds which divide the cloaca into three parts. We have coprodium, then urodium, and proctodium. In the proctodium, the reproductive uh, system will connect. In urodium, 
the ureters will come and release the urine and coprodium is connected to the colon or rectum okay in case of bird, uh, birds there is no uh, distinction between the colon and rectum so let us see the diagram of these various structures so first we have the oropharynx the mouth and pharynx are combined then we have the cervical part of esophagus the thoracic part of esophagus and in between them we have the crop then we have the ventriculus sorry the proventriculus and then we have the ventriculus ventriculus is made up of four muscle we have thick muscle and thin muscle and they help in the uh, contraction causing the grinding of the foot then we have the duodenum you can see it is in the form of loop so we have distal or ascending part and proximal or descending part then we have the jejunum and ilium and at the junction of jejunum and ilium meckel's diverticulum is present then we have the ileocecocolic junction so this is the ilium this is the cecum and the uh, sorry this is the colon and these two are cecum then at last we have the cloaca and just dorsal to the cloaca sorry uh, dorsal to the cloaca we have bursa of fibrisius which has immune function so it is not part of the digestive system it is part of the immune system so these are the various structures and their peculiarities now let us come to the digestion and absorption process so the digestion process is very much similar to mammal so there is nothing too much unique about it but the main thing which differentiated which is different in mammals and birds is the absorption process so the important points are passive transport of glucose takes place in duodenum and jejunum while active transport of glucose takes place in the ileum okay so active transport of glucose in the ileum and passive transport of glucose in duodenum and jejunum amino acid absorption takes place by active transport so sodium potassium atps pump is present in the duodenum and jejunum okay volatile fatty acid which is mostly acetate in case of birds is absorbed passively in the ileum and cecum mostly it is uh, absorbed in the cecum and the most important point in all of this absorption process is porto micron or we can say fat absorption so fat is digested to fatty acid and triglycerides and the fatty acid absorption takes place in the distal half of the jejunum so the location is jejunum and what will happen in the jejunum lactal lacteals are absent okay this is very important point in case of mammals lacteals are lymph vessels which are there for the absorption of fatty acid in the form of chylomicron but in case of birds lacteals are absent so what will happen the fatty acid and triglycerides they are covered by a protein cover to form a structure called portomicron okay so portomicron is the avian counterpart of the mammalian chylomicron and what is the unique thing about portomicron it is water soluble so it is absorbed in the blood vessels present in the villi okay then motility it has uh, two parts we can say motility has two sections first is the gastroduodenal motility and the second is ileocecocolic motility so ileocecocolic motility is very much similar to that of mammals we have two types of contractions peristaltic contraction and mixing contractions but gastroduodenal motility is very much unique in case of birds so we have the first contractions in the thin uh, ventricular muscles so as i said ventriculus has two type of muscles thick and thin so first the thin muscles will contract and because of this contractions let me make a diagram this is the proventriculus pv this is the ventriculus v and this is the duodenum d so the contractions in the uh, ventriculus will cause the feed to go from here to here okay so go from the proventricular and ventricles to the duodenum then we will have contractions in the duodenum so there is the reverse peristalsis and the feed will re enter into the ventriculus and then the thick ventricular muscles will contract and they will transport the feed back to the proventriculus and then in the proventriculus the digestive enzymes are released and then the feed will normally go like this from ventriculus to the duodenum so why is uh, this whole thing happening so in case of birds they cannot chew the food okay so the food is whole or the grains are whole so basically before the uh, digestive enzymes can act on the food the food has to be grinded okay and for this reason in the ventriculus first the feed will enter thin ventricular muscles will contract they will grind the food then it will enter the, into the duodenum and duodenum will it will shift the feed to the ventriculus again through reverse peristalsis and then again in the ventriculus now thick muscles will contract 
and they will cause further grinding of the feed okay and now the feed is very much uh, converted into small particles so it can now go to the proventriculus for the digestion process okay then regulation so in regulation we have cephalic phase gastric phase and duodenal phase so in cephalic phase we just see uh, or the bird is just going to see the foot okay and this will cause increase in the rate of contractions then we have the uh, gastric phase in this phase the foot will enter into the digestive system and here the vagus nerve is activated and it will increase the secretion and gastrointestinal motility and then at last we have the duodenal phase here the gastric secretion so the secretion of the proventriculus are decreased okay so this is the gist of it there are one two important points about the hormone so gastrin increases the acid secretion in the stomach so just uh, remember this trick gastrin wants the digestion to take place okay it likes the stomach to be em empty and active so basically it will increase the motility and it will increase the acid and enzymatic secretion in the stomach in the proventriculus while cholecystokinin secretin and vasoactive uh, intestinal peptide they are very different so cholecystokinin hates the presence of fat and protein okay it does not like fat and protein at all and where uh, this enzyme is released in the duodenum so if the feed will enter into the duodenum and it has fat and protein of course because it, uh, it is not yet digested so the cholecystokinin will be released and it will say uh, to the pancreas and ileum it will request them please release the enzyme so that i can get rid of this fat and protein so the enzymes will be released from pancreas and the intestinal glands and they will digest the fat and protein into their respective products which are fatty acid and triglycerides for fat and amino acid for proteins okay so this is the function of cholecystokinin it increases the enzymatic secretion in pancreas and intestine why because it wants to get rid of the fat and protein okay so cholecystokinin secretion increases in the presence of fat and protein in case of secretin it hates the presence of acid so when the feed is entering into the duodenum it is acidic because of all the acid secretion in the stomach so it will cause the secretion of bicarbonate ions from the pancreatic juice so pancreatic juice has bicarbonate and the concentration of bicarbonate ion will increase due to increase in secretin production okay secretin is the main uh, bicarbonate in uh, releasing hormone in case of mammals but in case of birds secretin it is present but there's another much more potent hormone that is called vasoactive intestinal peptide so vasoactive intestinal peptide is the main hormone which will cause increase in the bicarbonate secretion okay so these are all the important points that you have to remember when you are studying the avian digestive system i hope you like this video if so hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you